Hi there, everybody. Today we're going to talk about translation of functions. Uh, a translation is just a $5 word for moving a function up and down or left and right. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start out with just a very familiar function, y equals x squared. That is just kind of your standard parabola that has a vertex of zero, zero, kind of like that. <clears throat> if I want to move this left or right, um, first of all, you're going to have the square outside of parentheses, and then you're going to have x plus or minus a number, say this. Uh, that is a right three translation. <clears throat> I know it seems odd that minus means right, but what you're basically saying is you're, you're asking the question, what number would you have to put in here to get zero? And that would be a positive three. That's why my graph has moved left, I'm sorry, right. Uh, three, and it looks like that. Um, if you put in x is three, three minus three is zero, and therefore you get the point three comma zero uh, right there. Um, let's do y equals x plus four squared. This has moved left four. And if we were to graph it, one, two, three, four, Graph looked like that. Easy enough. Uh, let's do up and down. Then we'll look at some different functions that all kind of work the same way. Um, so let's do uh, y equals x squared minus 3. Um, this is down 3. Anytime you have a, uh, a plus or a minus after the term that's squared, you know, before we had it in parentheses squared, that was left and right. This is, this is down three. And also keep in mind, a minus means down, plus means up, as you would kind of expect. So now we're gonna take this and move it down three. And there we go, that's a translation down three. Uh, let's put them together. X minus two squared plus one. This is right two. up one. So you're going to start at zero, zero. You're going to go right two and up one. And there's your new parabola, right two and up one. Let's try this with some other types of graphs. So the, the good thing about translations is it works the same for any kind of graph at all. So let's do the square root of x. That looks roughly like this. Starts at zero, zero. Uh, if you want to uh, translate it, say we do x plus one and then plus three. This is left one up three. You go left to negative one, up one, two, three. And your new graph is going to start right there. It's going to be the exact same curve, just starting in a new spot. Let's do another one. Let's, let's make this interesting. How about sine of x? It's kind of a hard one. Your sine graph kind of looks like this. Roughly, I'm going to just draw a real basic picture of that. The, each cycle is 2 pi. If you did uh, y equals of uh, y equals sine x minus two, that would be down two. And your new graph would look like this. Say here's one minus one minus two minus three. Since I go down two, my center is now kind of along two, and we go up to negative one down to negative three and kind of oscillate like that. The whole thing is shifted down two, and I'm not drawing a very accurate picture, but I don't really need it right now. Um, the whole thing has gone down two because we have minus two after the sign. Let's try one or two more. If you did a cube, a cube looks like this, roughly kind of a squiggle. Uh, if you wanted to do 
uh, x minus five cubed plus two, write five up two, and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five up two, and you're gonna have your squiggle. I missed the area, kind of right over there. Not a very good picture again, but I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the movement, the translation, not trying to draw an accurate picture or a, or a pretty picture. So anyway, that's all translations are up and down, left and right, $5 word for something very simple. See you next time.